Hello Bonita Bay Club members. I'm here once again with Hal Akins, our Director of Golf Course Operations uh, with another Bay Island video update. Hal, today is Friday, August 9th. You have to be so excited for today because tell our members what's going to happen by the end of the day today. Well, it's been a long time coming, trust me. <laughs> um, hopefully by the end of the day we'll have sprigged our last holes. We're standing on number eight right now. This is the last hole that we're going to sprig. Um, so if everything goes as planned, uh, we'll finish sprigging it today. If not today, then tomorrow morning. So yeah, it's a pretty big day. Okay, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty cool. And as we've gotten to these later holes, um, you know, one, 17, 18, two, three, those holes, they look like they can be ready to play in about three weeks. And here we are on this hole um, where the entire fairway area is just dirt. What's the process to try to get these holes caught up that we did last with the first ones we did? Um, well, the last six weeks has been a little slow because the rain has definitely impacted us. So uh, we'd like to be a little further ahead, but uh, to compensate for that, uh, these last holes were double sprigging them. Okay. So we're putting down twice the amount of grass. So hopefully that cuts the, you know, the grow in time somewhat in half. Yeah, so today we're fortunate enough, uh, we got the crew here and we're gonna go out and actually see that sprigging process. And as you see behind us, you see a lot of the areas that are, that are sodded on the slopes and around the green. And if you can see all the way in the distance, that green was already sprigged, uh, what, earlier this week? That was Monday. Monday, Monday. So all the greens are sprigged now. Uh, we had, did it in three phases. The last phase was Monday. So those, those have been in the ground for four days now. Okay, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you on a uh, flyover narrative of holes number eight, nine, and 10. And then we're gonna head out to number 11 and show you the springing process. I think it's just so cool and amazing that you just basically chop up the sod, cut it in, and it just grows in sand, so. Yep, yep. I think uh, it'd be pretty amazing to, for people to see what it is like after four weeks and then what it is after eight weeks. And we have, you know, certain sets of holes that are at those stages and that can kind of give them an understanding of, you know, what's ahead here, you know. Okay, that's great. Well, let's take a little aerial flyby of these three holes and we'll head over to 11 again, all right? All right. Okay. All right, Hal, here we are. We're starting to come over the tees on hole number eight. I'm gonna go ahead and let you tell everybody kind of what they're looking at here on the screen as we do the flyover. Uh, well, you're looking at the tee complex and the, the sod was laid yesterday on the slopes and then we actually sprigged the tee tops this morning. Uh, what we started doing probably eight holes into this, we had enough sod established uh, on the slopes and, and things of the first holes that we sprigged and the short game area that we were able to harvest our own sprigs, which allows us to sprig a lot heavier and reduce the amount of time it takes to actually grow these teas in. So we've, we've tried to uh, move the process up a little bit by using our own sprigs and, and sprigging heavier. It's amazing as Kyle and I were driving out here, that tee looks like it's almost ready to play and you just put the sprigs <laughs> on today. So I say you put them on. In a week, thick. it will almost look like a done tee. <laughs> now we're looking at the, uh, the fairway here. It's all dressed out. You can see where it's nice and smooth and uh, everything's been sodded. All the, uh, the steeper slopes, the things that we want to protect, the, the uh, features that we want to protect have all been sodded and we're ready to sprig the areas that are not as as steep and, and uh, vulnerable to washing out. So, Yeah, another thing about this hole um, that we kind of talked a little bit about before, but now that you can see it's a lot more established is this new green complex on eight is just, it's really cool <laughs> with the addition of that front right bunker, the one in the back left that's gonna save a lot of us. Yep. Uh, especially in the winter if we get a south wind when it's coming there hot. And then that front left chipping area, it's gonna give a lot of different shot making um, options for all the players so. yeah that turned out really that was kind of an in the field kind of change that we made with the architects and uh it was a nice opportunity and that's a really really unique greens complex i think okay let's uh we'll bounce over to number nine and get everybody a preview though i know a lot of people had questions about what's going on number nine especially with wow. all the uh year-round residents living in the tower so we'll head up to number nine number nine is the coolest Okay, Hal, here we are on hole number nine. Um, this hole was just, uh, obviously the tees were sprigged today, but the fairway area was sprigged how long ago? Uh, nine days, eight or nine days, because half of it was sprigged on Wednesday of last week and half on Thursday of last week. So you'll get an idea of what one week period of time 
uh, what kind of progress you make. You can see that these sprigs are already starting to green up and we got a pretty good sprig in there so it's a pretty even uh, consistent layer of sprigs so we're pretty happy with that. Yeah one thing that uh, I've really noticed uh, through this process of running the drone and versus when you're driving on a golf cart when we're standing here on this tee box that fairway looks a, like a really light green color and then from up above here it still looks like it's a lot of, of dirt and mud um, this is kind of unusual the different looks you get from yep. the different heights no doubt when you're looking at from an angle like like we are on this tee it does look like it's almost halfway grown in doesn't it yeah so the uh the fairway bunker complex is here um the new bunker on the right then that cross bunker that's always been there with that sod it just looks absolutely gorgeous already uh especially next to the sprigs and, and the wet muck <laughs> uh, as we kind of start to approach the green here can you tell everybody what you know has been done different and what they can expect when they're playing this golf hole uh, this is my favorite green complex by far i think i mean i love the bunkering around it this green is actually much larger than it was but because of the size of the particularly the front left bunker uh, when you're looking at it from the fairway it makes this green look awful small and looks like a really really small target um, that that green came down a little bit probably about a foot uh, we took most of the false front out of the front of that green and obviously we tightened up all, all the bunkers around it and it, it really turned out good, I think. Yeah, the, um, the bunker faces with the grass faces in them really look dramatic and, and they're really aesthetically pleasing. And a lot of people kind of asked us what we were doing on the back and on the left side. And as you can see from the video, the back right is kind of kicked up a little bit for a little bit of a backstop and that left side has been softened quite a bit. Mm-hmm. It should hold two shots now, no problem. Now, I really like the fairway bunker. Let's just looking at it from here, uh, the way it sits out there. It, that looks pretty awesome. Yeah, so this, this hole is definitely, um, it's not going to be a pushover like everybody kind of wanted it to be, but still an awesome par five. So oh. we'll make our way over to hole number 10 next, and then uh, after that over to number 11 and check out some spriggin'. Okay, Hal, here we're going to take them over uh, the 10th hole here. You know, several changes have been made to this hole through the construction process, including the long waste area there right over the lake that goes up the left. Um, you want to kind of talk about the, the waste area there and, and the use of it as a cart path? Yeah, well we took the cart path out the right side of the hole and uh, actually regraded that side and had a nice slope there so that looks really good and uh, this, wa this waste area now serves as our cart path and I think it really uh, sets the hole off really well. It frames it nice and uh, it's beautiful. I mean as you can see right there, I mean it's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, we redid this green, um, you know, a few years ago. I think it was probably what seven years ago. We redid yeah, this green. I would say probably seven years uh, ago. So we kind of really went back, and we didn't have a whole lot of couple locations on there. And I think this new green is just spectacular with that wall. I'm going to try to come in a little bit from the water side here, so we can get a little bit of a look on that. And um, this is another green that we changed out in the field. Yep, that's a Hal and EJ modification right well, there. Well, we'll <laughs> have to tell them that until we find out if everybody likes it. Uh, we came out after the architects had originally came in and they had the floor in and there was really the left side of the green there you see over the bunker uh, really didn't exist. And so the old green, it did come over, not quite as far as it does now, but in the center there's kind of a little bit of a, a rib in there where if you catch just the left side of that, it's going to go all the way down to that left side for a, for a hole location. So also one of the things for you know our average golfers that try to bounce it in there, right there in front, that is almost perfectly level. So if you need to bounce the ball into the green, you can now, whereas before, any ball that was short had probably about a 75% chance of kicking in the water. So well, that's what that wall allowed us to do. Yeah, so just, you know, I think it, this is going to be really cool when it's all you know developed in and we get that putting surface just how you like it and um another another great change here yep this is this green's a lot bigger than it was you know before in the back end on the left all right well let's go have some fun on tractors over here on hole number 11. okay let's go all right, Hal. Well, <laughs> when you said that we were going to show them the sprigging process, I didn't know you were going to take me back to my youth on my grandparents' farm in Iowa. Yeah, you should um, be used to this. <laughs> kind of explain to everybody what's happening here. Well, we're here with Victor and Sammy, and we're on what we call a sod to sprig machine. 
and they bring this on 220 square foot rolls. 2,200 square foot of this side will do an acre, which is 43,560 square foot. So today we're actually double sprigging. And what you'll notice is that he'll actually be taking half of this and, and splitting the last pass. And that's how they double sprig it. Okay, so then we got another tractor right here behind us. And yep. you can see where he's yep. kind of splitting. See how he's straddling that last pass right there? Yeah, and so that way we know we don't have any skips. Okay, so as we, I see this big roll here, what's happening to this sod? Well, they're rolling off this large, this large roll of sod. They're rolling it into a, a machine that chops it up. It drops it out on the ground. And then it, there's cutters that actually cut it into the ground. Yeah, so what's interesting as I look at this, it doesn't look like it's putting anything down. Uh, is there a lot of this that actually goes underneath the it, soil? It, it, it actually creases in most of it. So you're not going to see most of what's going down. Okay, well, very cool. Um, Hal, congratulations. I know that um, to me it seems like getting all this stuff down is a huge accomplishment for you, which I know it is. Um, but I, I do also realize that a lot of your work is just about to really start to get this place growing in and looking beautiful. No, this is, you know, it sounds like the end of the process, but it's actually the beginning. Uh, now I get to grow it. I can't grow it if it's not on the ground. So this is a big day for us. Hopefully we finish by the end of the day. If not, we finish tomorrow. And then we actually get the, into the process of uh, fine-tuning the golf course, getting it grown in and detailing. We have a lot of odds and ends that we have to button up, uh, but at least we'll have the majority of the, the planting work done. So it is a big deal. Well, Hal, thank you to you and your crew and all the hard work. Uh, we know here at Benita Bay Club we got the right man on the job for it. So. Well, thank you for the opportunity to do this. All right. Thank you, Hal. As always, to our uh, Benita Bay Club members, if you ever need anything, just contact Hal or myself and um, I'm going to try to get the heck off this track before I hurt myself. And thanks to Sammy and Victor. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you.